فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as saying every deed of the son of Adam would be multiplied a good deed receiving a tenfold to seven hundredfold reward Allah the exalted and majestic has said with the exception of fasting for it is done for me and I will give a reward for it for one abandons his passion and food for my sake عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل عمل ابن آدم يضاعف الحسنة بعشر أمثالها إلى سب سبع إلى سبع مائة ضعف قال الله عز وجل إلا الصوم إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به يدعو شهوته وطعامه من أجل الحديث متفق عليه <clears throat> the second hadith now what does fasting mean some people don't understand the reality of fasting pay attention to this some people don't really understand what is fasting now and when a person doesn't understand what fasting is then of course the action that comes out of it is also going to be wrong right Placing a ruling on something, you have to first of all perceive the thing that you're going to place a ruling on, right? Sahih. Listen to what fasting is and what it means. What does the Sharia consider fasting? Sah? That's what this hadith is going to give us. This hadith tells us that the fasting is three things that we fast from. We fast from food. We fast from drinking. And last but not least, we fast from desires. Sahih? Many people only think it's the first two that I mentioned, which is food and drinking. That's all fasting is for them. So all the day they're swearing, they are committing haram and going against Allah wa Taala's command. They're not fulfilling that which is needed from them. Some of them are not even praying. Okay? Are you with me, brothers? Brothers, praying without a sutra. If you can place a sutra, inshallah ta'ala. So we said that the fasting is what? From how many things? Three things. At-ta'am wa-sharab wa-shahwa. And who are you doing it for? Li-ajli Allah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. The poet, he said, Ikhlasuna lillahi saffi al-qalba min iradatin siwahu fahdhar ya fatin. Ikhlasuna lillahi saffi al-qalba min iradatin siwahu fahdhar ya fatin. You're doing it for whose sake? You're doing this action for Allah. The intentions also for Allah. Pay attention. When we say you're doing something for Allah, what does it mean? It involves the action for Allah and the intention for Allah. Those two. And that's the haqiqah and the real meaning of ikhlas. That's what the hadith teaches us. Also what the hadith tells us is that every single action that a slave comes with is multiplied. Al-hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha. The righteous deed is, is multiplied by ten. Up to what? Ila sab'imiati dhu'fin. Up to seven hundred. But fasting is different. Qala Allah, Allah then intervened. The hadith is a hadith al-Qudsi. I'm a hadith ilahi. Allah says, illa sawm. Except fasting. Except what? In other words, what it means, this istithna is called istithna mutasil. It's a connective exception. It means that it has the reward with all the other actions. To the 700 that all other, other, other actions reach, it reaches that with it. But it has additional. What is it? فَإِنَّهُ لِي is for me. It's mine. 
and I'm going to reward you in accordance to it. Why? Because he left his desires and his food for my sake. When Allah says, I'm going to take over the giving the reward, I'm going to reward him. It's, leave it to me. Is Allah going to give something very cheap? Hypothetical scenario. Hypothetical. Allah has a greater and a better example. We don't give any example compared to Allah. But hypothetical. So the, the matter becomes clearer to you guys. Let's say the leader of a country comes to you and says to you, listen brother, don't worry, tonight you're my guest. And he leaves it like that. Don't worry, tonight you're my guest. I'm going to take care of you. صح? Brothers, are you going to think he's going to take you to a cheap hotel or cheap restaurant? Huh? Are you? This is the leader of a country. What do you expect he's going to give you? Real deal, right, Zakaria? I mean, I, you're expecting that he's going to be musrif. You go over point, overboard, right? Why? Because that's befitting to him. That's what's expected from him. Sahih. Pay attention, brothers. But when would a person pay attention? This is the issue. This is what we have to ponder here. You only expected that from him because you know he's the leader of a country. Sahih. If you didn't know who he was and he bumped into you into the street and he said to you, Don't worry, I'm taking care of you today. You're like, Who are you? Sahih. And when we don't know Allah and we have no knowledge of him and he says to us, You don't feel it. Because you don't know Allah Ta'ala and his crews. You haven't really understood who he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when Allah says, Wa ana bi, you would have felt it. Walidalika Shaykh ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah, in his majalis Shah Ramadan, he said something very powerful. Before him, he took this from Sufyan ibn Uyayna or Sufyan Athori, one of the two he took it from. I don't know who it was, don't quote me on that. But I know, but I know Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih Uthaymin, in his book, Majalis Shah Ramadan, he mentions this, which is what? It is that the Prophet did he not say alayhi salatu wassalam that the person is going to do you know the person who is bankrupt the day of judgment and the companions they said Ya Rasulullah we don't know Allah wa Rasulu A'lam Allah and his messenger know what a muflis is some of the riwayat they said al muflis fina man lays man la dinara lahu la dirham lahu the muflis the bankrupt is one who has no dirham no dinar he has no money then the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Muflis. Man yati yawm al qiyamah is the one who's going to come the day of judgment. And he insulted this person. He belittled this person. He insulted, he beat this person. He did this. And all of his righteous deeds are going to be taken from him. Taken from him. Taken from him. And he's been put on this person. And he's going to be t- placed on him. And he's going to give, be given to the person you oppressed. And then when it finishes, for infiniate hasanatu, if all your good deeds finish, then your, his sins are taken and they're placed on you. Are you with me, brothers? Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen, and also, as Sheikh Sufyan ibn Uyayna, they said, the righteous deeds that are taken from you, fasting is not from us. Never. Are you with me? Fasting is what? It is not from those things. Because Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّهُ لِي is for me. وَأَنَا أَجْزِي bi And I will reward you. And Allah does not break His promise. I will reward you on this. I will what? I will reward you. So pay attention. Why is it that Allah is going to reward you? Because you came with servitude. Ubudiyya, what was needed from you. You listened to your master and you left off something. Your desires and your food. For whose sake? Allah wa ta'ala. You did that for him. And you did it at a time he told you from this time to this time. And my beloved brothers and sisters, there is not a station greater than being a slave. Allah wa ta'ala, chose the Prophet to call him Abd at the times when the Prophet ﷺ was doing the best actions. Allah says, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid al haram. Allah is telling you, He ascended him up in the sky, but He referred to him as what? Abd, slave. He said, I took you up that night, Muhammad, you remember that night? I ascended you up to the sky. I brought you to me. And Allah is referring to him as a what? Slave. Allah also says, Tabarak al-ladhi nazzal al-furqana 
ala abdihi sending the Quran on who? On his slave. Is there anything better than a person to be sent on other than the Quran? Is there anything greater than the Quran? The best time Allah is sending Quran on you like that. Allah said, my slave. The time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up to give da'wah. لَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ يَدْعُوهُ كَادُوا يَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ لِبَدَا When the Prophet stood up, alayhi salatu wasalam, to give da'wah, to guide the people, Allah said, my slave stood up. So you see the times when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is doing the best of actions, or he's in the best positions, Allah refers to him as a slave. And Ramadan brings out of you this slave, slavery that you have, this umudiyah that you're a slave. المؤمن كالجمل الألف يقيد حيث قاد A believer is like a rope is placed in his nose. And he's been told, go left. He goes left. Why the nose? Because if it was said the neck, you can pull back. And you say no. But if a rope is put in your nose, it's because it's a delicate part of your body. You can't really pull back. Can you really pull back? You really can't pull back. You have to run with the person who's pulling you. Are you with me, brothers? And Ramadan brings that out of you. Allah says to you, Kulu wa sharabu, eat and drink. Command. Who's commanding you? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Eat and drink. Hatta yatabayyana lakum al khaytu al abyatu min al khaytu al aswadi min al fajr. Thumma atimmu al siyama'a ila al layl. Wala tubashi. Allah is commanding you. You're a slave. You're like, yeah, master, okay. I'm going to eat from this time to this time, master? Okay, yes, I'm going to eat from this time to this time. I can't have intimacy with my family? No, you can't. Okay, I can't. Slave. This is what Ramadan brings out of you. And it takes and it gets rid of what? It gets rid of the thing that the people want to run away from. Harabu Fabulu nafsi wa shaytani. They ran away from being slaves to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they got affected by being slaves to who? Shaytan and their own nafs. And once you become a slave for your own nafs. And shaitan, you live in a very distressful and agony and pain. Wallahi, you will. Just look at Friday nights. Those people who are richer than us. Some of them are CEO, managers, project managers of branches, banks, corporates. They're vomiting on the ground. Sleeping inside their vomits. The area I live in, southwest London, for me, Friday night gives me a dalil, sarih, wadih. Wallahi, it gives me tumanina. That you can be the smartest person you want. If you haven't fallen under the realm of servitude and you haven't accepted that, you're going ver- to live a hard life, brothers. You're going to live a very hard life. Here's an issue I want to speak about, which is very important and is connected to this issue. Is that as we said, the eating and the drinking is allowed to what? Based on the ayah, وَكُلُوا وَشَرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ Means that you leave off the food and the drinking and your desires between these designated timings. Which is what? طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ Until Layl, night. Which is Maghrib. What does it mean eating? It means the food reaching your stomach. Okay? That can also that can be from the mouth. It can be from your nose. If you take something from your nose. If you take it from your ears. Whatever it may, it may be. Anything that goes into your body and it goes to your stomach. That's eating. And it can be anything you want. Some people, what do they do? They inject themselves. And that gives them an energy that's also falling under. Wakulu wa sharabu. You can't. But what is permissible is tasting the food on your tongue. Like women who cook, who have to know if they've added too much salt to it or if they di- didn't. They are allowed to take a very small portion of it and to taste it, they're allowed to. Okay? Also, another thing that. Scholars, they mention that a person needs to stay away from, which is, as differed upon, is the issue of those who have asthma. Asthma, asthma, right? Who take the inhaler. There's difference and khilaf amongst the scholars because it is from the mustajaddat. And it's from the nawazil. Are you allowed to take inhaler? Is it permissible? What is best is, da' ma yaribuka ila ma la yaribuka. The simple view is, leave off what gives you, the, what has doubt in it, 
to that which there is no doubt. فَمَنْ إِتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدْ إِسْتَبْرَأَ لِدِينِ وَعِرْضِ Leave off anything that has ambiguity and unclearness to it. Since there's a mold, since there's a niza' and a khilaf amongst the ulama, don't place your religion on the line of discussion. Sahih. And that's one of the things that a Muslim needs to realize. Sometimes you find an opinion. Some scholars may say that this is kufr. And some scholars may say, no, it's not kufr. For example, abandoning the prayer. Whichever opinion you take, which are two valid, acceptable, strong opinions, both of them are strong. I mean, one is stronger than the other. And that's subjective to each person. But that being the case, why would you enter your religion in a place where there's discussion going on? Pray your salah. Whether it's kufr or not. For you, you're always going to. You're coming. The people who were saying it's not kufr, they were not saying it's not kufr, chill, relax, sleep. Was that, is that why they were saying that? No. Uh, everyone is just talking about how dangerous it is. Some are saying the danger of it hasn't reached kufr. And some are saying, no, it's very dangerous, but it's kufr. And some are saying it's not. So brothers, you have to understand that. Another thing that we need to stay away from is taking two, when you do wudu and you place the water into your nose. Huh? What is that called? Istinshaq, right? Taking the water and placing it on your nose. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Baligul istinshaq. Go far into the istinshaq, illa an takuna sa'iman, except when you're fasting. Don't take it too much. Other times you're allowed to, but this time specifically, in Ramadan, don't take the water into your nose too much. Because again, it falls under the issue which is what? It falls under the issue of eating and drinking. And that hadith Abu Dawood narrated in Tirmidhi and Nasa'i. Now, in the same hadith, Abu Hurairah radiallahu an narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Every deed of the son of Adam will be multiplied; a good deed receiving a tenfold to seven hundredfold reward." Allah the Exalted and Majestic has said, "With the exception of fasting, for it is done for me, and I will give a reward for it. For one abandons his passion and food for my sake." There are two occasions of joy for one who fasts, joy when he breaks it and joy when he meets his Lord. And the breath of an observer of fast is sweeter to Allah than the fragrance of musk. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, kullu amli ibn Adam yudha'afu al-hasanatu bi'ashri amthaliha, إلا إلى سبع إلى سبعمائة ضعف قال الله عز وجل إلا الصوم فإن إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به يدعو شهوته وطعامه من أجلي وللصائم فرحتان فرحة عند فطره وفرحة عند لقاء ربه ولا خلوف فم الصائم this hadith again is under the chaptering of Fi Shay'i Min Fadail Siyam, some of the virtues pertaining to fasting. We've already taken part of this hadith, but there's something that we need to go back to again, which is that the Prophet had told us, brothers, pay attention to this. The righteous deeds that a person comes with, Kullu Amal ibn Adam. You da'af every good deed that you do. Allah multiplies it. That, uh, that's what makes a believer never belittle. لا من المعروف شيئا. Do not belittle a good deed. Don't ever belittle a righteous deed. Wallahi, your brothers, don't. Even if it means that you meet your brother with a smiling face. Don't belittle it. Sahih. Don't belittle what? A righteous deed. And say to this is, this is small. It could be that small action which you have belittled. It could be something that enters your gender. There's a story I'm going to mention to you guys. This story Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentions. Mm-hmm. Ibn Al-Qayyim mentions it. And he authenticates it. Ibn Al-Qayyim. He authenticates it. And it is as he said. He did not just authenticate it himself. Abu Abdullah Hakim al He also authenticated this story. This story is as follows. There was a man. I generally don't like telling stories. I'm against the idea of telling stories. 
Sahih? That's why I had to give a big muqaddama that's authentic. Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned it. But sometimes it's beneficial, right? This story, it goes as follows. It was, this story is the people of Banu Israel, the previous nations. It was a man who was an abid, a worshipper. He used to worship Allah wa ta'ala a lot. It was said that he worshipped Allah for 70, 70 years. 70 years he worshipped Allah wa ta'ala. He was a rahib, a monk. You know how rahibs live? They have something known as a sawma'ah. A sawma'ah means a place which they built. They stay inside there. Guess what they do? It's got two floors, but there's no staircase. There's no staircase. So how does he go to the second floor? That's where he lives. There's a rope dangling from the second floor. So he, the, the rope is, when he, when, when he comes down, he lets the rope dangle. When he goes up, he takes his rope up. So nobody can come to him. There's no staircase, nothing. That's how they cut from everybody. Sah. Ibn Juraj was like that. You know the story of Ibn Juraj? In Sahih al-Bukhari, when the young boy spoke. 70 years he was doing that. He never came out. He comes, he goes to the market, he buys his stuff, he goes. That's it. One day he came. He came to the market. He saw a woman. And he saw this woman. She fascinated him. So he went with her. And he committed zina for seven days with her. Seven days. After seven days, He remembered what he was doing was wrong. Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُوا الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ When they do wrong, they remember Allah straight away. Because you know why they remember Allah straight away, my brothers? It's because prior to this sin, this individual was connected to Allah. And prior to this sin, he was a person who was strong and learning. When he slips, and that's everyone, when he slips, the foundation he built, which was strong, has now allowed him to come back and remember his sin. If you don't have that, brothers, when you slip, you slip. You go. You go and you don't come back. Some brothers who went off deen, they went and they've not showed their back yet. May Allah bring them back. And may Allah keep the ones who are already there, who, who are practicing already, may Allah keep us all steadfast. القلوب بين أصبعين من أصابع الرحمن يقلبها كيف يشاء والله my brothers the heart is between the two fingers of Allah Allah tosses and turns it as He wishes if our messenger had had what he had and was the best he said أنا أعلمكم بالله وأتقاكم I am the one who knows Allah the most and I am the most pious one amongst you. He used to make his this dua every time Qiyamul Layl before he started the salah. He would say, Allahumma fatir as-samawati wal arad. Alim al-ghaybi wa shahada. Anta tahkumu bayna ibadika fi ma kanu fihi yakhtalifun. Ihdini li makhtulifa fihi min al-haqqi bi-idhnik. Inna ka tahdi man tashaw ila salat al-mustaqim. He would say, oh Allah, guide me. Guide me from the disputes and arguments that the people are having. Oh Allah, guide me to that which is the straightest. Nabiullah Ibrahim, who stood up for Tawheed, who stood up for La ilaha illallah, made sure that he even boycotted his own family for it. What did he say? He said, oh Allah, divert me from idol worshipping. That's the most common form of shirk. Rabbi jnubni wa baniya an na'bud al-aslam. Oh Allah, divert me and my lineage, all of my children, from worshipping idol. Something he destroyed when he was a young kid. He was a boy when he destroyed the idols. If our children are asked today, what's shirk? They'll tell you, idol worshipping. That's the most common form of shirk. He's saying, oh Allah, that's the one I fear. You know how they, why they feel, fear that? Because they knew to Allah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, anything. Ahmed rahimahullah said, if I place my one foot in Jannah, and another foot is outside Jannah, I'm still worried. I'm still worried. I'm still concerned. I need that other leg to enter Jannah. I'm not sure yet. Iblis came to Imam Ahmed in his tarjama. It was mentioned that Iblis came to him on his deathbed as he was sleeping. And then Iblis said to uh, 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 Ahmed, you have escaped from me, Ahmed. Ahmed, you escaped from me. And Imam Ahmed looked at being an alim. He looked at him and said, not yet. Wallahi, not yet. Until now, you can make, my, you can make me flip. 
Till now, you can make me flip. So one of the common dua that a pure person needs to make, and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, and Umm Salama, they said that the Prophet used to make a lot, was, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala deenika. Make my heart steadfast on the religion. Oh Allah, Allahumma fatir al-samawati wal-ard, alim al-ghaybi wal-shahada, anta tahkumu bayna ibadika fi ma kanu fihi yakhtalifun, ihdina, limakhtulifa fihi min al-haqqi bi-idnik. إِنَّكَ تَهْدِي مَنْ تَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Oh Allah, keep us steadfast. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمًا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ Wallahi, it's a blessing, brothers. That they say that the man who made the light, he tried the light 999 times. That's what they say. None of us here is as smart and as clever as that man. And how he made a light, and how effort and how much ishtihad and effort he put into it. Without Allah, that brain didn't bring him to Tawheed. That brain didn't bring him into Islam. You who haven't, who haven't worked for it, you who haven't put hard work in it, Allah gave it to you. فَهَذَا نِعْمَ يَا إِخْوَةِ Wallahi is a blessing. And if you don't feel that, and you don't acknowledge that, and you don't not realize that, that's a problem. It's a problem. Going back to the story, he slipped after 70 years of worshipping. He, he turned and what did he say? He slipped for seven days. He woke up and he remembered what he did. As he was crying and he was emotional, he saw a group of people sitting somewhere. So he threw himself in the midst of those people. As he was sitting with them, a man came and he, he used to give breads to these poor people that he was sitting with. So he gave them, brothers pay attention, he gave him the bread. When he gave him the bread and all, the, all of them were given breads, he took his bread, he took a bread. And he's not part of the collection, he's not part of the team, he's not part of the group. So one of the men said, where's my bread? He said, Wallahi, I brought the amount I used to bring. And I, so they counted and they found out that he what? That he took the bread. That he took the bread. So the man looked at him and said, this is my bread. So he went and he gave him the bread. He said, take it. This is your bread. This is your bread. Keep it. And he gave him the bread. He died. Whether he died from hunger or whether or not, just the story mentions he died. Allah wa ta'ala took his righteous deeds, 70 years of ibadah, compared it with the seven nights he committed the zina, and it overcame his 70 years of hard work. All of it went. Then Allah took the bread he gave. Placed that in comparison to the seven nights he committed zina, and his, all his other shortcomings. And he overweighed everything the bread. This man was called Sahib al raghif He entered Jannah because of a bread. Never to belittle. Was he expecting that to be the cause of his Jannah? So you can pray Qiyam, you can fast, you can do Zakat. Sometimes it's one action that has achieved two things. Safa'ul qalb, your heart at that particular moment was so clean and you were sincere about it. You did it. And the acceptance came with it. That might be the cause of you entering Jannah. So since you don't know which thing can take you to Jannah, all day and every day you're working hard. So the righteous deeds our brothers are multiplied, multiplied, multiplied. And this is in the rahmatillah. Sins are not multiplied. Allah wants, Yuridullahu an yatuba alaykum. Allah wants to, to accept your repentance. Wa yuridul ladina yattabi'una shahawati an tamilu maylan azima. Yuridullahu an yukhaffifa ankum. Wa khulika al-insanu da'ifa. Allah wants to accept your repentance. Allah wants your righteous deeds. Allah is happy when you repent. Allahu afrahu bi tawbati abdi. Allah is pleased, my brothers, when you repent. Allah wants to accept that from you. 
The people who are following their whims and desires. Artists, rappers, singers. All these people we're looking at as role models. They want and tamilu mail and azima. They want you to divert from. They want you to take. If Jannah is there, they want you to go right over there. They you don't want anywhere close to Jannah. Allah then saying to you, Allah wants to make the matter easy for you. Allah wants to give you what your body needs, what your mind needs, what your spirit needs, what your soul needs. Allah wants to give it to you. But then Allah reminds you something. Allah created you weak. Allah created you weak. Weak in what way? You're truly not going to understand what's good for you. The good is right in front of you. There it is. But because all these things have gl- gl- glamours and glist- glitters on it, you turn away from that and you turn towards what? A clear-cut enemy whose hard efforts and his work is to divert you from Jannah. He finds joy because he refused to prostrate to Allah and he refused to follow Allah's command. He finds joy in seeing you do the same thing that he does and the same thing that he did. Whenever he sees, the, the Prophet ﷺ told us, when shaitan sees the children of Adam prostrate, he says, wail be to me. I refused to prostrate when I was commanded. And look at him. He was commanded to prostrate and he prostrated. Jealousy, hasad, hate this is a vicious how is it you've given your enemies all your efforts your hard works you said this is my house keys this is my life this is my ins and my outs and you let him into your life and you let him destroy you how Kaif? how has that happened your enemy no. 